Hey, this is MJ and in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to make this beautiful waffle stitch blanket. I'll be using Mary Maxim Mellow Spun DK for this pattern. And the colors that I'm using are cream, mauve, dusty peach, and soft pink. You will need two hook sizes for this pattern. I'm using a 4.5 millimeter and a five millimeter. So the border will be done with our smaller hook and our waffle stitch will be done with the five millimeter. And these are Capricorn Streamline hooks from Furls Crochet. And I will have a link in the description box on where you can get the hooks as well as the yarn. The beautiful soft and cozy yarn for this blanket was provided to me by Mary Maxim for this tutorial. So this blanket will be worked in a striped block pattern. So we begin with the cream, we'll do blocking in our pink, we'll again change to the cream, do our blocking in peach, we'll change back to the cream, and then we'll do the mauve, finishing off with cream at the end. Now you can alter this if you would like, or you could even make it all in one color. So we'll begin with the larger hook and I'm gonna show you a smaller swatch of the blanket. So the blanket is worked in multiples of three. Now our beginning chain is a multiple of three plus one. So for our baby size blanket, I will have you chain out a total of 154. I'm just gonna be making a smaller swatch, so I'm just going to chain out. So I'll chain out a total of 19. You could even go a little bit bigger, but this will be a good gauge swatch for you to make up just to check your gauge. Okay, so we're going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook, but we're going to turn and work into that back bump. And we'll work single crochets in the back bump across. Okay, so this will be our setup row and you will have a total of 153 stitches for the blanket or you'll have 18 stitches for the gauge swatch. So now we're going to turn and we're going to do a stacked double crochet in the first stitch. So you're going to work through the first stitch making a single crochet. Okay, and then you can see your two loops here. We're just gonna go through that second loop and we're going to work another single crochet right on top. Okay, so this is now our stack double crochet. That is our first stitch. Now we'll work double crochets across. So this is row one of the pattern and this is our wrong side. So the setup row was the right side. Okay, so I've worked all the way across. We're going to turn and do a stacked double crochet in the first stitch. So we work a single, then just going through that second loop, another single. Okay, so now the next stitch, we're going to work a front post double crochet. So here's our first stitch. Here is the post of the next stitch. So to do our front post double, we'll yarn over. We're gonna go around the stitch. So front to back to front, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So you can see the front post double crochet now has popped out this stitch. We'll double crochet in the next two stitches. Okay, 
and then a front post double crochet around the next post. Okay, and we're repeating that across, so a double crochet, the next two, and then a front post double crochet into the next. Okay, so let's repeat that and then I'll meet you up at the end. So we're ending the repeat with the front post double and in the last stitch, we're working a double crochet. Okay, and now we'll turn. We're doing a stacked double crochet in the first stitch. A double crochet in the next stitch. And then we'll do a front post double crochet in the next two stitches. And you see they kind of pop up a little bit. So front post and a front post. Whoops. Okay, so this now is gonna be our repeat. We're going to double crochet in the next stitch and it's the front post of the other row. So it's kind of pushed that way. And then we're doing a front post double in the next two. And you'll notice that they do slightly seem to wanna to pop this way. So it's easy to identify them. So that's our repeat across a double and then two front post doubles. So I've repeated that across to the last two stitches and we'll do a double crochet in the last two. And then we'll turn. This is where the magic starts to happen and you see that's pop that up so we're going to begin to get that waffle stitch look. So now what we're doing for the pattern, we're repeating rows 2 and 3. So rows 4 through 12 will be a repeat of row 2 and 3. So let's go ahead and do row 2 again. So we're doing a stacked double crochet. Then we're working a front post double crochet. Then we'll work a double crochet in the next two. And a front post double crochet in the next. So double crochet in the next two. and a front post double. And this is so, this pattern will work up so quick, so much quicker and easier than you think. So I'm gonna repeat that across. I've ended my repeat at the front post and now we'll work double crochet in the last stitch. We'll turn and now we're repeating row three. So we're doing a stacked double in the first Then we're working, and again, you can kind of just look at your stitches and it figure out even almost without looking. I'm gonna do a double in the next. And then these ones pop up, so I'm going to do a front post double in the next two. Double crochet, and then a front post double in the next two. And I'm just repeating this across to the last two stitches. Okay, and then we'll turn and you're really gonna start to see our waffle pattern come together. So now I'm not gonna work through everything with you, but let's go ahead and do 
row two again, because when we're repeating rows three and two, we're going to end on row two before we change color. So I'm gonna show that with you changing the color and then I'll give you the rows that you need for each color as you work throughout the blanket. So we'll begin with that stacked double. So this is now our repeat of row two. We'll work a front post. And then these stitches that sit back more, we're working a double into each of them. Okay, so let's just repeat this across. And then I'm going to show you how to change color. Okay, so We'll be working the cream until we have 12 rows. That doesn't include the setup round or the setup row. So what we're gonna do here is pull through, yarn over, pulling through two, and we're changing color on the last two loops. Okay, give this a tug. We're going to turn and work a stacked. I like to crochet over the tails on the first stitch there. And then we'll just be dropping that off. Working your stacked. Working a double crochet in the next stitch. and front posts in the next two. So I'm gonna go ahead and work across in the pink so you can see the transition. I've given some color suggestions on in the PDF. If you're looking to do some different colors than what I've chosen, there's lots of choices in Mellow Spun, so you can pick really whatever you like for your blanket. Okay. So this is how your transition is going to look for, to your next color. So we will have 12 rows of color A, 24 rows of color B. We go back and do a 12 row section of color A, 24 rows of color C. We go back and do our 12 rows of color A. And then we do 24 rows of color D, finishing with our 12 rows of color A and then finishing it off. But what I'll do now is I'm finishing working up my blanket. Once I have that complete, I'm going to meet you back up to show you then how to work the border and finish off the blanket. Okay, so I've been working away on my blanket and you can see how beautiful it's coming together. So I'm working on the 12th row of our cream color. So I'm just working this off across and then I'll show you how you can finish off the edge. So we'll do a nice border and then I'm going to block it so it has a really nice, beautiful finish. So once you get to the end of the row, we're going to chain one and turn. And I'm going to finish with a, a row of single crochet because that's how we started the pattern. So I'm going to work across just now going through every stitch, working a single crochet.
Okay, so I'm gonna work this all the way across and then I'll meet you up again. So now once I've worked all the way across, I'm going to change to my smaller hook. So my 4.5 millimeter. I'm going to chain one and turn so that I'm back to the right side now of my work. And we're gonna begin working our border. So the ends are simple. We're just going to work one single crochet into every stitch. Okay, so I'm gonna continue. Once I get to the other side and we start doing the edges, I'll meet you up again. Okay, I'm coming to the corner. At the corner, I'm going to single crochet, chain two, and single crochet. Now what we're going to do is crochet two single crochet per row. And we're going to do that evenly down the side. So for every row of our waffle stitch, we'll be doing two. So I'm coming up to changing color and what I did, because I don't want to have to be cutting and weaving, I've just separated off a couple small balls so that I can drop off and leave my color and then I have another ball for the other side. So that will just, if you want to do multiple rounds of your border, that just is going to save a lot of cutting and weaving. I'm going to carry the cream along with me. So what you're gonna do is we're coming to the last stitch. Okay, so pull up that loop and then we're going to yarn over the next color. Okay, and then we need to find in our first row Got a bunch of tails I'm crocheting over right now. I can start dropping some of them off. As I work along. Now, if you weave in those side tails ahead of time, you won't have to crochet over them, but if you leave them like I did, then I'm just trying to crochet over them as I go here. Okay, so one, two, one, two, one, two, one. And we are going to bring the cream along with us because we're going to have to change color a lot to the cream. So I don't want a bunch of balls of cream. I'm just gonna keep carrying it along. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of thick at the beginning. Like I say, if you want to weave in some of those tails ahead of time, you can. 
I'm just gonna keep crocheting along my purple section and then I'll meet you when I change color. So I'm coming up to my next section and if you don't want to crochet over those tails, we can always just get rid of them. Okay. You can weave them in beforehand. or just crochet over all of them like I showed you already. make sure if you don't like the look of this again you can you can cut your creams and pick them up as you go make sure you give it a tug so that it's not bunching in behind and then what we'll do is we'll drop off our color and yarn back through with the cream and then we can work across the cream. So now what you have to do for this to work, picking up your colors back up, we, are, we will have to do a reverse. So instead of continuing in the round, we'll have to come back in this direction so we're able to pick that up again. So if you don't want to do that, just cut and weave, which is fine too. Really whatever you want. And you could even do this border all in one color, but I want to keep um, the consistency with the stripe pattern. So I'm just changing color as I go. So I'm gonna continue this around and then I'm going to meet you back up for the join. Okay, so I've been working away on my edging. I did change my mind and I decided not to carry any yarn because I didn't wanna see anything through at all. So I ended up just attaching different balls for all my sections I'm not really sure what's better, whether just to cut and weave or have all these little balls, because this is a little bit of a nuisance too. So just whatever you decide is going to be fine. So I'm getting to the end here. And I just wanted to show you again at the corner, we're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet. I'm going to slip stitch, <clears throat> excuse me, to join. And if you decide to cut as you go, you could keep going in the round, but because I've got all my balls attached, I'm going to turn. So I'm gonna chain one, I'm gonna turn, but now this also means that you need to make sure that you end on a right side row, not on a wrong side. So I'll probably do three rounds in total. So now we can single crochet and every time we come to the chain two of our corner, we're going to single crochet, chain two, single crochet. And that's just gonna make a nice corner. So now I can just single crochet until I get to the purple and then I'll change my color. So now all my balls are there and attached. So the first round was a little tedious, but this round will go a little bit easier. Just 
detail here, I'm just crocheting over it back in the opposite direction and then I can just cut it. Okay, so now we'll change over and just keep going. Okay, so you keep going like that. And then when you get back up here, we're going to slip stitch to join and go back around. So we wanna finish on our right side. So I'm gonna continue and keep working my border. And of course you can, go as wide as you want with this border. I'm just gonna do a total of three rounds so that I end on the right side. You would wanna do five or seven, an odd number if you're going to chain one and turn like I'm doing. You decide to go all the way around in the round, you can do as many rounds as you want and stop whenever you want. Okay, so I finished off the border. You can see it here now to really finish the blanket off so it looks its best, I do suggest blocking it. So here's my corner up here, and this is going to help flatten out any of the waving. It's going to stretch it out and make it look really good. Now, because this one is a baby blanket, I'm going to wash it in some baby soap. So what I'm going to do is Take my blanket, soak it in just a little bit of the baby soap and some lukewarm water. I'm gonna allow that just to set for around 25 minutes. And then what you wanna do is rinse it out, squeeze out as much water as you can. I like to wrap the blanket up in a towel just to get out as much excess water. And then I'm gonna lay it down on some large foam mats and pin it out to measurements. I like to get the 24 those big 24 by 24 inch uh, foam mats. And I'm just gonna lay a bunch on the floor and then I'll pin this out to measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that to get this blanket looking its best. Then it will also be ready for gifting because it will be nice and washed, nice and pressed and ready to gift. Okay, so I finished blocking my blanket. I've removed the pins. It's nice and beautiful and pressed now. If you want, you can sew on a personalized tag once you've finished. For a baby, it's probably a good idea to sew one on, but you can also hammer, hammer these on as well. The leather rivets and I'll have that linked in the description box. So you want to hammer those in place. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and tap the bell to stay updated on all my new videos and tutorials. Make sure to click through the description box and there'll be a link to take you over to the blog. And this pattern does come in two sizes so you can make the baby size or the large throw size.